이번에는 나라박 소식입니다. 최근 국제 오픈도 선교회는 2015 기독교 박해지수를 공개했습니다. 지난해에 이어서 올해도 북한이 14년 연속 1위를 차지하고 있습니다. 자세한 소식 지금부터 전해드립니다. Global conflicts and terror movements made 2015 the worst year for religious persecution in modern history. Open Doors named the 50 most dangerous countries in the world for Christians, gathering information from people on the ground. In the five areas that we measure, violence against Christians, discrimination, pressure, all of these different things, it's just more difficult in every continent, in every country. In 2015, global Christian persecution substantially increased. For the 14th year in a row, North Korea remains the top most dangerous country in the world for Christians, with the other 9 out of 10 countries topping this list being controlled by some form of Islamic extremist government. And that extremism is expanding, becoming the lead generator of persecution for 35 of the 50 countries. We need to identify that not every Muslim is an extremist, but we still have to know that the Muslim community needs to speak to extremism within its community because it is greatly affecting violence against Christians. Gladys, a Kenyan Christian, became involved with Open Doors after the terror group Al-Shabaab mutilated her husband with a machete for being a pastor. She moved quickly to forgive them as the first part of her mourning process. The journey of forgiveness started immediately. Once you forgive, it's like you release yourself. You open up to God to work to you, in you. Gladys says while the situation is getting worse, she believes non-extremist Muslims are beginning to stand with Christians to help protect religious liberties in Kenya. And Abigail Robinson joins us now from our Washington, D.C. Bureau. Abigail, what does Open Doors want the President of the United States to do to make this issue of persecution a priority? Well, one thing David Curry told me is that he thinks the Obama administration is seeing this issue as a secondary issue, and he wants them to realize that when Christian persecution first starts in a country, it is one of the first signs of bigger issues to come. It's followed very closely by chaotic events, civil war, government takeovers, and he wants the Obama administration to connect that and see it as a sign of bigger issues. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's so it's proven in the, the fact that 35 of the most dangerous countries for Christians in the world today are under control of Islamic extremist groups. So yeah. he and wants them to make that connection. Sure. Well, what action can the global church take to help these brothers and sisters who are being persecuted for their faith? Well, obviously, one thing we can do all the time is just lift up our brothers and sisters around the world being persecuted in prayer and just remember them all the time when we pray. And another thing is to, you know, give financial contributions to groups that are on the ground and have access to give relief, aid, provide shelter for the Christians that are just living in terrible situations and being persecuted all over the world. You introduced us to that uh, Kenyan woman, Gladys. She told you ordinary Muslims are beginning actually to stand up to these extremists. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Well, Gladys was such an amazing woman. And one of the things she really wanted to tell me was that we need to not see non-extremist Muslims as the enemy. And we need to work with them to fight these terror organizations. And she was telling me that things are getting really bad in Kenya and that Al-Shabaab is stopping buses, separating the Christians from the Muslims, killing the Christians, and then putting the Muslims back on the bus. And she says there's been a huge prayer movement throughout Kenya as things have gotten really bad. And she knows God is answering the prayers um, because of something incredible that happened about two weeks ago. So take a look at what she says. And last two weeks ago, something very interesting happened to reflect that God was hearing the prayers. Another bus was attacked. And when the Al-Shabaab stopped the bus and told people to get off, the Muslims in the bus refused to separate the Christians. They told this Al-Shabaab, kill us all, but you are not going to get the Christians separated from us. For all of us who had that, we said, yes, God has had our prayer. Because it's not about us hating Muslims. It's the issue of tolerance. Can we stay together, respecting each other? You with your faith, me with my faith, but being each other's keeper. And Gladys told me no one was killed on that bus, which is such a sign that these prayers are working and we just need to continue to pray.
Yeah, good message. Abigail Robertson, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you.